And his love is dynamite. It is exceedingly great. It is so pure. And it is so non-threatening. And that love will penetrate every fiber of your being. And if you've never ever experienced that kind of love, you're in for a wonderful treat and a journey for the rest of your life if you're open to God. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Cast all your There's a lot to be said about healing of memories. God heals our hearts. This is his great desire to heal his people. 
so that his people can be whole. Make us whole, whole in mind, whole in body, whole in spirit, whole in soul, whole, so that we can function at maximum capacity with the grace and power and life of Jesus Christ. So don't think it's strange if we talk about healing again and again. This is our mission. God said, I want you to bring healing to my people. And he does the work, of course, but we talk and share the healing love of Christ. And so we'll go right into it. I realize our time is limited. Uh, there's some scripture references. I'm going to read a couple. Um, and the others, I'll just quote maybe excerpts from it. But turn with me to Jeremiah 30. There's much to be said about healing in Old and New Testament because God is healer. He fixes us. He makes us whole through that life and healing love. Jeremiah 30, verse 17 says, For well, I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. So God says, I will, this is good, I'm just going to read one verse there. I will restore help to you. I will heal you of your wounds. This is the nature of God. And there's one other scripture in Jeremiah 8, then we're going to have you to sit afterward. Jeremiah 8. Okay, verse 20 through 22. Verse 20 says, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Together. Is, is there, there no bomb in Gilead? Gilead? Is, is there, there no, no physician, physician there? there? Why, Why then is not the help of the daughter, daughter of, my of my people recovered? recovered? Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we stand before you giving thanks to you because of the great love that you have displayed through Jesus, your precious Son. And we thank you, O God, that because Christ died for our sins, that we might live, that we might be fully restored to wholeness, O God. We thank you and give you praise. The work of Calvary, O oh God, will never go in vain. And we thank you today for those that are listening by way of television. And we praise and honor you and ask that the precious Holy Spirit will take full control and minister unto your people again this day. Be glorified. Be exalted. Bring the healing love of Christ in Jesus' precious name. We honor you and give you the preeminence now. In Jesus' name, and all of his people said, amen. God bless you, and you may be seated. Praise the Lord. So we have a couple of scriptures there, some scriptural reference in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we constantly refer to Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, about the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Also, Matthew 4, 23 and 24 talks about how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for the Father was with him. And so one of the big things that Jesus did was brought healing and deliverance, healing of the physical body, healing of the, 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 the soul the, and uh, the spirit of man, he healed. And that, that was a major, major thing that he did. And Jesus, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He doesn't change. 
And we are glad that he doesn't change because there's a great need for healing today, even as it was then. And the Bible says in the, uh, um, in the book of Corinthians, talks about the gifts. Uh, when he has sent it in Ephesians, he talks about the gift. And in the Romans, he talks about the gifts, uh, gifts of healing. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But they are there in the Bible. And we cannot measure or exhaust the, the healing power of Jesus, um, uh, how he chooses to heal. But we know that he wants us preserved, body, soul, and spirit. He wants to heal us. We'll have a total change of body uh, and the consummation of our salvation when Jesus comes. This mortal, as you see it now, will change. It will take place in an instant with the, in the twinkling of an eye will be totally changed uh, to have immortal bodies now that we uh, want this happen. But for now, God wants to heal us because we've been saved. We've been brought into the kingdom of light. And all of the darkness that we experienced uh, brought uh, sin, uh, sin brought bondage, darkness, ignorance, uh, a lot of other things. And David says we were born in sin or David said he was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And so all of us, regardless to how good our parents and backgrounds may have been, we need healing. We need God's help. So Christ comes into our lives, saves us, and begins this sanctifying process of healing and healing motions and healing wounds and hurts and healing the brokenness of our hearts. Everybody don't accept this. But for those that do, they can receive from the Lord. I am glad that you received or accepted. And because it's all by faith, right? We have to receive anything. Whatever we receive from God, it is by faith. And <clears throat> Isaiah 53 talks about, Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Um, one someone looking up the griefs. Um, mentioned that it mentions, uh, it speaks really of anguish, grief, pain, and sorrow. Surely he had borne our anguish, sorrows, our griefs, our pain. And the Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes. We are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned aside every man to his own way and own thing. And the Bible says, but the Lord has laid on Jesus, his son, the iniquity of us all. Iniquity deals with hidden sins, sins of the heart. And uh, so healing of memories is, is, is important. God's wonderful love is key to it all. God's love for us. God so loved each and every one of us that he was willing to send his son to die for the sins of humanity that we might be fully recovered, fully restored back to what God had in mind in the beginning, fellowshipping with him, holiness, and walking in the knowledge of truth, light. Um, Jeremiah talks about it, saw the plight and the condition of Israel, and he uh, was saying, what is the real problem? Where is the physician? Is, I mean, is there no bomb in Gilead? Gilead was a certain uh, city and place where they had all kinds of healing bombs. He said, is there no bomb in Gilead? Why then? He said, is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughters of my people not recovered? Why is Israel not healed? healed and restored and God is a healer. God promised I will heal you I'll heal your wounds and he says that to us today many if not all of us experience wounds, pains griefs, sorrows, anger whatever we have experienced that in our lives because we live in a fallen world and we all have been helped by imperfect people and so leaves us wounded sometimes, things that we interpret, we interpret them wrong. Sometimes as children, 
our perceptions are quite wrong, but still we hurt because that's how we perceive things. Some things were genuine, genuine hurts and pains. But be that as it may, we have a Savior that come to bring life to us and to show us how things are truly supposed to be, how God intended for things to be. And that's the hope, that's the joy. One man, as I was reading, was given an example of his life when he was talking about healing of memories. Um, the Bible has quite a bit to say about memories. Remember this and remember that and all the, um, um, And he talks about your sins and, and, uh, and iniquities. I'll remember no more after God cleanses them. We um, grow and start from the womb. Starting from the womb, things happen to us. And depending on what goes on with the mother at the time that a child is in the womb, all those things can affect the child. Rejections can start even in the womb and, and abandonment situations where fathers or mothers and or both abandon their children uh, for whatever reasons uh, or they bring pain and hurt and it brings a lot of uh, pain and sorrow. But this man, in talking about healing of memories, shared that when he was 15, uh, 15 years old, uh, he saw his father die. Uh, and, and as he saw his father passing as a kind of abandonment or rejection. And that can happen when a loved one leaves someone that they love dear. They actually see that as they abandoned me. But... Um, and so he became afraid of being abandoned, especially by men that he respected, he said. And then God revealed the need to uh, someone uh, that understood healing and uh, he un uh, under brought it or he revealed it, his hurt. And then he ministered prayer to him and God healed him of that uh, hurt and the pain. And then he said later, God, the Holy Spirit began to show him um, that um, there were also some times when he was wounded when he thought his mother was unfairly critical of him. He became afraid of criticisms and responded quite poorly to them. And this can happen also if we have been criticized in growing up. It's not easy for us to take criticisms, even sometimes constructive criticism. But then God helped him and healed him helped him to see how his feelings had been influenced by his past. And all of us at some times or another have experienced those hurts and negative feelings, as I said earlier. But the beautiful thing about it is our God is a right now God. And he is quite capable and able to heal us of all of our pains, all of the things that go very deep in our lives. God, as he specialized in bringing healing to us. So I would like that you would open your hearts today and begin to be open to the Spirit of God uh, to heal hurtful memories of the past, memories that still may be affecting you or I in some way. And trust me, we do not outlive certain things uh, the memories and things can still jar us or hurt us because of the way we have been made. But Jesus Christ comes to take the pain and change those mental images and give us new images and give us new perceptions, give us a new uh, understanding in, in, uh, so that we can live lives not fearful, or not angry, but lives that can affect others in a more meaningful way. He paid the price. Once again, I will be seeing that kind of rhetorically. He paid the price for all of our sins. There's no real reason why no every one of us shouldn't be healed because the price has already been paid. It's paid. When Christ died on the cross for our sins, it was buried and rose again. He paid the total price.
Christ for our redemption, our salvation, total and all-inclusive, everything that was needed, he, that price has been paid. So now on our part, as we are open to receive this healing from God, it is a wonderful thing. Remember, it is by faith. He can, it can be available, but not received if it's not received by faith. So the key is going to be being open to the spirit of life, being open to the spirit of God. He's the healer. We are simply instruments. As you well know, no matter how he uses us, we're still instruments of his glory. God is the life. God is the source of all life and peace. And it is his desire that we all be whole. Wholeness, as I said before, is the key. It's the goal of healing the heart of man. And Jesus, his love, is the key to understanding the whys and receive his healing love. A lot of times we ask, why? Why did this happen to me? Why this and, and, and all of those things, which we really don't have to get into when it comes to this healing. But allow the gentleness of Jesus, allow the precious Holy Spirit to begin to minister his, God's great love to us. And this love is dynamite. It is exceedingly great. It is so pure, and it is so non-threatening. And that love will penetrate every fiber of your being. And if you've never, ever experienced that kind of love, you're in for a wonderful treat and a journey for the rest of your life if you're open to God. Give him a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wholeness is the key. Born in sin, David said, and shapen in iniquity. He said, in sin did my mother conceive me. David understood something about this fallen nature of man. And then uh, through the fall and sin, we learn selfish and wrong ways of coping and responding to people, ourselves, and God. The more healing we receive, the cleaner we, clearer we can, we're able to see. And with the entrance of the word of God, our thought patterns and our perceptions and our behavior changes. Healing of memories, hurtful, painful memories of the past. Things that happened to us during our early developing stages in life. They tend to hold us back even when we are adults. We function, but a lot of times those, there, we tippy-toe around things that we won't be hurt anymore because of the memories. But as God heal our memories, we are made better. God's desire is that we love one another. And it's not always easy to love when someone reminds you of someone in your past that brought pain to you. But it is still important. John 13, 34 and 5 says, by love, by, all, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. This is what Jesus said. When you have love one to another. And um, he said something also in Matthew 5. Uh, Bless those that persecute you. Pray for those that do you wrong. Do good to those that harm you. You know, it's that new nature he's talking about. The new nature that, that does people good when they do you harm. When they speak evil of you, you do them good. You treat them right. Because this is the new nature. Now, this is the nature of the kingdom of God. It's not the nature of the old fallen man, but it's the nature of the children. It's the nature of God, and it's the nature of the children of God. So we're children of God. We are the light. Just like you see those lights, we are the light of this dark world. The world is lie in sin and wickedness. We, the children of God, are people of light. We show people the light. We show people how Christ is as we let him have his way in our lives. It takes time. It takes consistently trusting and believing and allowing God to do what he does. It's a work that continues. It's not something that you can uh, get help at the altar once or twice and you're, you're, you have been, you have arrived. We, it's an ongoing process because we have relationships always. And as we have relationships always, there's always forgiveness that we must display, always uh, uh, praying for or whatever uh, to, to, to display that w the way of Christ. And God has called us not only to be healed, but to bring healing to many others. Um, 
bearing fruit is the desire of our God, bearing fruit. God desires that we bear fruit, bearing fruit. And then he tells us, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, the same person will bring much fruit. So it's in him that we're able to bear fruit. And sometimes things hinder fruit bearing, the hurts, the wounds, the pain, the sores that we've encountered over our lifetimes. They hinder us from really bearing good fruit. We may bear some fruit, but it may be fruit that have a little, have a little worms in it. And God wants to cure us. But he wants to heal us, get rid of this, these things in our lives. He's a good Savior. He's a great Savior. And he's so willing. He's so willing to heal us. He knows where we are. He doesn't dislike us because we need healing. He is not that way. His love is totally different from what we experience in our own lives and toward in one another. His love is not that way. He's not threatened by our behavior. He's none of that stuff. So he's, a total, he's in a total different category. So when you come to him, you don't have to wonder if, if God is, if he's holding this against you, if he wants to cr- kind of hit you across the head because of what you've done. None of those things. You can come with an open heart to God and says, God, I've experienced these things occurring over and over in my life, and I don't like it. I know this is not your nature. I want help, Lord. And then you open yourself to God. And then when you open yourself to God, let him be honest with you and you be honest with yourself. Let God speak to you. If whatever he says, don't negate it and don't give reasons why you, don't, you, you, you felt this way or why you shouldn't uh, forgive. Leave all of those things. Remember, he's the potter. And if we cooperate with him, he can bring us to total healers. It is so wonderful. And it's so rewarding to be healed of God. It takes us, we, 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 you know, we've received some healing. But like I said, there's so much more. There's so much more. And as long as you live in this body, God is perfecting us and making us more and more like him so that the light of the knowledge of God will shine so beautiful in our lives. So we're vessels, but he loves us, and he wants us whole. This is our mandate. He says, I want my people whole. I want to heal my people. And God, God understood and he was there when we went through some of the most painful times in our lives, some of the most traumatic times in our lives. God was there. He, know, he knows what happened to us better than we can articulate it. He knows and he understands. But even greater than that is the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.